Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on the e-bike. This time I'm having a look at what I think is the best BMS for an e-bike. I mean Andy Kirby sells the one in store and Tony's done a lot of work with the app. So need I say more? I don't think so. But anyway, let's get into the video. So this is the smart BMS that Andy Kirby used. So let's have a look at what we get. So this is the little... Ah, okay, I see. So this is a little goodie bag. So these are all the balance leads. These have actually got like locking connectors on them. That means they can't come undone. These are the temperature sensors and the little starter button. Um, I'm going to be using these temp sensors. There were four of them. I thought this only had two, but not complaining. I'm going to be using the um, start-stop button on the, uh, con on the handlebars, like the um, ignition starter, to actually power on the BMS to make it more like an actual motorbike. And then... I'm also going to be using an Arduino to monitor the sensors as well and display it on a screen. And then here is the party piece itself. So on previous generations they had a small connector for the sensors, but now they've upgraded it to a bigger one which is why it looks so big. So these are obviously the balanced connectors here. You can go anything from 8S up to 24S, obviously I'm not pushing that, I'm only using 14S. And then 300 amps current, which again, not even scratching the surface of that. Although, I don't know, would you put 300 amps through that? I don't know. Today I have a, a variety of bits of come. So we've got some temp sensors, some extenders uh, for the balance leads, some bolts and washers, and some caps on tape. Just waiting on a few more bits. But that's enough to get started. These are 3D printer sensors, they're meant to be, and I got these because the, um, the actual probes are very, very thin, so can easily tape onto the back without taking up any space. And here are the finished temperature sensors for the BMS, and here are the other ones, so eight temperature sensors in total. So here I have the positive most battery pack that's gonna go furthest up the bike and have the main positive lead connected to it, so that is an exposed cell, which is good because I haven't got to try and cram it in between cells, which I will have to do for other ones, as you'll see. So I just pick up one of each sensor, and then I just want these to come out, yeah, about there, so that it looks something a bit like that. Okay, so there are the sensors coming out the middle of one of the larger packs. This has got the eight cells in it. I didn't manage to film this because my camera ran out of battery just as I was doing it. Um, but it's quite a tight squeeze getting these cables out here. You can see it's pushed out a little bit, but um, it, it'll be fine, especially once I tape it and put it in place. And for this one, I've just made the cables come out a little bit further because it's gonna be further into the bike. So now I've completed doing all the packs. So we've got the two sets of temperature centers and then the balance lead for each one. Um, I've temporarily wrapped these up in neoprene again using masking tape. I'll probably use the Captain tape again um, to do it for real. Um, but yeah, as you saw, all the sensors are on. And just to test, I've connected up my multimeter to the Arduino probe. And again, if I put my finger on that, you can see the reading goes down, which is good. And then if I do the BMS sensor, again, this is the 10 case sensor, and you can see that goes down as well. Right, so now it's time to get all these balance leads uh, connected up to the BMS and to the battery. And today, the bike's out here, so let's get these all installed. So after thinking about it, I'm gonna put the BMS, I think, up here, or the other way around, so that the battery negative goes down. I was gonna put it simply on the end of the pack like that, but um, I don't want heat from this to transfer onto the pack, and this, this way the frame can act like a big heat sink. Now obviously it's better for these leads to be too long than not long enough. So these four wires are the ones that are going to go to the negative most pack. Right, so now I can see where it needs to come down to. And if that connects is there, I'll probably cut it about there just so we've got a bit of slack. So let's get these tinned and all soldered on. Right, so here is the harness that I've made. So this is the first connector and this is the second connector obviously I only need two wires so I took them out and then these are the four ends that will go to the batteries um, in order of length so this is the longest one this goes to the furthest end and the negative battery then the next one 
then the next one, and then the last one, which kind of has to combine the two connectors because of how the positives work on here. So let's connect up these harnesses. Okay, that's a good start, nothing's blown up. Um, I'll begin testing these. That is not bad for the first time. Now I'm going to go back and double check that I did that in the right order. Do loads of confirming and stuff because I'm not going to trust myself first time. But that is quite impressive. I also put these um, small bits of heat shrink over each section so I can kind of keep all the wires together. So I'll shrink that down as well. Right, so these are the other end of the temp sensor cables and actually the temp sensor harness that comes with it is about as long as the longest wire on here so what I'm going to do is just cut the very end off here about where my finger is and then put that on there because these don't need to be extended or anything and then I'll cut the rest of them down to the appropriate length and again I'll make this the first cell and then second cell so it works right to left just like the uh, balance leads. All right, the time has come to connect this up. Even though I've checked it all so many times, I'm still a bit nervous because if it's gonna go wrong, it's gonna go very wrong. But at the end of the day, these wires will probably act like fuses, but that's not the, that's not the right attitude, so don't think like that. So I'm gonna connect the positive one first. Okay, here it goes. So nothing should happen. And then this is the one. I'm just going to gingerly connect it. Three, two, one. And let's connect up the temp sensor. Yeah, so that's red, that red wire is how this BMS gets its power. And then you hold this down for five seconds. So here goes. Uh, oh! Got a blinking red light. Now I have no idea what that means, so I'm going to download the app, um, which is, I think it's like five quid, but it all goes towards helping this BMS and helping Tony, so it's well worth it. So just, just get it and go support it if you're getting one of these BMSs. It allows you to monitor everything. So let's see if it picks it up. Ah, <gasps> there it is. Twenty-five degrees, and then these are all the cell voltages. So let's have a look. What's the difference? Ze See, that's what I mean. Zero point zero zero one volts difference, and these have been sitting here for like a month. That is how good these cells are. Let's have a look at the temp sensor as well. So yeah, you can see they're all reading twenty-five degrees. I'm guessing that's not far off what the ambient temperature is in here. Balanced cells. It's made a beeping noise. Yeah, that's why I've just gone in the settings. The balance difference cut off 0 0.002 volts, which is actually higher than what these are. So I'm just going through the settings, um, setting things up, um, and then I'll just give it a quick charge to see what happens. So I've connected up the positive to the positive and the negative to the C minus of the BMS. Right, so I've managed to get it charging. You can see current's going in, power supply's going on. I was an idiot, I'd set this lower than the battery voltage, so obviously it wasn't going to charge. So I'm just going to take it up to 54 volts. I don't want this to be too fully charged. The difference has increased a bit, 0 point to 18 millivolts, but that'll, that'll all balance out. At the end, I've changed parameters, temperatures are all fine, so yeah, at least it's working. So that's the end of this video. We got the BMS working, which is absolutely brilliant. So now I'm just gonna wait until I have enough to buy the Anderson connectors, which is what I'm gonna be replacing these bars with. They're about 80 quid, which is a lot for connectors. But I've done a lot of searching for them and they are basically the best connectors for this bike. So hang around for that and I'll see you in the next video.